Hi there, guys. I'm Chris Bowden, and this is Vicki. Hi. Future girl. Hi. Hi. We're here at the Geek Group, and we've had people writing in saying, we know you guys are holding out on us. We know you got a bunch of sirens, so please, for the love of God, do a video on sirens. So this video is for Jessica, who has a fetish for all things that make loud, obnoxious noises, which is probably why she's a fan of me in the first place. Oh, probably. Okay, so we're starting out with the basic, generic, electronic siren. These are boring, but they're what everybody knows. You can get these at Radio Shack for like 20 bucks, and I got it at a yard sale for three. Ooh. So, um, and first we'll show how they work. So they run on 12 volts DC, so we'll just hook up the ground. Now there's one black wire, a red and a green. Black is your ground. Red is one tone. I think it's steady, so we'll turn this on. No. Oh, no, that's the warbling tone. And by the way, if you're working on sirens, put them face down. It makes it a lot easier because if you pull it off, yeah. So that's the, the steady tone, or the warble tone. And then we've got the uh, steady tone. Mm. If you want to have big fun with one of these when you're hooking up like uh, a security system in a car, put a siren inside the car. Works great. Because if that goes off inside a car with all the glass reflective surfaces and you're inside the car, you can't even think. At the, it's big fun. So we take off the sticker on the back, and there's a big Oh, we're taking bolt. it apart. Yeah, it's taking it apart because I have an idea. Okay. Because what this is is just this is all electronic. It's all solid state, and it's wedged in there pretty good. And <laughs> And these are pretty boring just as a thing because it's just a little oscillator circuit and a very basic electronics package and an amplifier and a little power supply probably in there. Or a little knockdown voltage regulator thing. And if I can get it apart, it's all caulked like crazy. So this can be kind of tricky. To do. They, they probably don't intend for you to take them apart. Usually not so much, no. Yeah. So we'll take the guts right out of it. There we go. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay, now now here's here's the whole thing. It's it's a little setup, a couple oscillator circuits, really simple stuff here. A voltage regulator and stuff like that. And then there's a compression driver. So like if you hook it up now, it won't be nearly as loud as it was. Um, it'll still be obnoxious, but we do obnoxious well. So here, we'll fire this up. Okay. Mm. And, but, and, but it's not nearly as loud as it was. Now, as you dig into this, this is a compression driver, which is basically a very specific type of speaker designed to work into a horn. So this is like every little $20 Radio Shack siren dream, because we're going to do something that nobody ever does to these things and it'll be kind of fun. So I'm taking out the screws that mount the horn on. By the way, if you ever want, you can take the guts out of one of these little Radio Shack speakers, and you've got the two wires off the back here that lead to the speaker. And you can hook these, like here's, here's the speaker. You can see the compression driver. Um, but you can take these wires off and leave this all connected. But just take off these wires and hook them to your home stereo amplifier. And the speaker is probably only rated for like 10 watts. It's really low power. And they're only good for high frequencies. But you can play your home stereo. You can put these on top of your stereo speakers for like super tweeters. <laughs> you can do that if you want. Now, this didn't come apart the way I was hoping. Uh, the compression driver is actually permanently mounted up in here, and you can see the voice coil to it. We'll let Mikey zoom in really good. That's the voice coil right there, and you got it? Okay. And the coil sits inside the pole piece here and the magnet assembly, but this won't work without it. If I fired it up right now, it won't make any kind of sound at all. See, you go reach in to plug your ears. It's not, it, it's, it won't make any noise. It can't. See? It's on, but you can't hear anything because the coil is energized, and this is, this is working, but it can't move because the magnet isn't there. If you move it closer to the magnet, see? Oh, that's fun. And it even works off. Anywhere near the magnet, you'll get some kind of sound out of it. 
Because this, all the speaker is, is a, a basic electric motor. And this is an electromagnet trying to move back and forth, but there's nothing for it to act on. So it's making this magnetic field, but there's no stator for it. This is the rotor of the electric motor, and this is the stator. Or think of it as the armature and the field winding, like that. But that's, that's the basic thing, and, and here's the little compression horn for the compression driver. Now what I wanted to do, and we can't because it sucks, is I wanted to hook it up to one of these because I have a really big compression driver right here, and that's just cool. And if you look on the back of this, you can see there's the feed horns. This is designed for two, so you can talk into this and go... And it's just neat. But I also have another one of these that has speakers on it. So we can, and this is much heavier, because the speakers weigh a ton. So we're going to have to stand up now because people can't see us. But if we take this compression driver and this siren, ha, ha, ha. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. You got me? Yeah. OK. Now I'm going to take, get my Gerber, and we'll just cut these two wires, because we don't need the voice coil on there. No, because we have one there. Because we have one there. Yeah. Now, that is probably a standard little 8-ohm speaker. And those are standard little 8-ohm speakers. Now, if we take and strip that wire, and strip that wire, what do you want? She wants to lick my hand. Dog needs love. Yes, I gave She's you She's having a day. Go, go lie down Okay, now. let's figure out where the connections are. Okay, our connections are on the back here. So we're just going to grab these. And I'm just going to clue just together really quick, because that's it, it's TV, so we're OK. And I'm just going to connect the speaker output of the little amplifier to the big coil speaker here. And then we grab our black lead. Uh-oh. Is this going to be really loud? It might have some oomph to it. I don't, I don't really know. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, that's not too bad. But now we got a big speaker there. And it works. It's got. Yeah. That's kind of obnoxious. But, <laughs> but it works, see? Yeah. And that's how you turn a little siren into a big siren. <laughs> What's really cool is these speakers mm -hmm. are designed for a giant siren. This is for an electronic air raid siren. And we've got a whole set of these, but that's, that's a totally different project. So there's. There's everything you ever want to know about the basics of electronic sirens. And I'm going to keep that. That's, that's just, I can get into a lot of trouble with that. Oh, hey, I got, mm. I've got my refrigerator siren. I can just stick that to the side of the fridge. OK, and, and I, got, I also have another little compression driver, but this isn't nearly as much fun. But this is there's a little coil there. You can see a thing. And yeah, but that, that's not nearly as much fun. OK, now we've talked about electronic sirens, but there's another kind that's way more fun. Mechanical sirens. Now mechanical sirens are a totally different thing, because this is, this is what they've used for uh, probably about eight, 12,000 years. Easy. They've been around <laughs> a long time. Um, and what this is is a motor and a chopper. And now, we're, this, this is a lot more complicated to explain, because electronics is easy. It's, it's a little oscillator circuit and an amplifier. This is different. The motor turns an armature inside, and I'll let Mikey get a shot in there. And you can see the armature that turns around. And actually, what I'll do is I'll start this turning really slow, and it won't make any sound. Get some power. Oh, there it goes. There. And now you can see it turning there. And inside, there are veins. And are we turning the right way? Yeah, we're doing it right. Inside, there's veins. And it sucks air in the front. Most people think sound comes out the front of a siren. It doesn't. It actually comes out the sides. It sucks air in the front. Mm -hmm. And centrifugal force throws it out. And then there's these holes. And you can see there's a whole ring of holes all the way around it. And the number of holes lines up with the number of choppers. And as the air comes through, the hole gets smaller, 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 and then it's closed, and that opens up on the backside, right? 
Well, that makes a sound. It's the same way as like the, think of this as like the reed in a clarinet or a saxophone. It's okay. the same kind of thing. It, it sets up a vibration, and as you spin that faster, I don't think I got enough oomph on that one. I might have it wired backwards. Polarity may matter. I don't think it does. I think mean, it's a DC motor and polarity doesn't matter at all. But yeah, I just need it's more turning, volts than I've got there. It's turning the same way. Yeah. It's still turning the same direction? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, I'm going to hook this up to a higher voltage source because I'll bet that isn't a 12 volt siren. Yeah, it's a 120 volt siren. So let's go over, we'll turn that power supply off and we'll go over here and grab some big volts. Ooh. This is DC at 120 volts. It's a little bit more kick to it. Now, turn that on. Now watch as we bring this up. It'll start to make a very low note. Okay, and you can hear it, it's really quiet. Yep. Now as we go up higher, Feel the wind come oh, it's like side. air conditioning. Yeah. It's great. But now watch this. If I put it face down. It doesn't matter. Or shouldn't matter. Does it? It doesn't make any noise. Well, oh. the bearings are angry. <laughs> <laughs> because it's an air pump. And this is the exact same system as our big siren. We actually have, and we'll do a video on it. I couldn't today because it's buried. where it's, it's in storage. Um, we have a full-size air raid siren that we'll do a video on. And the air raid siren does both. It has the megaphone out the front, and these come into channels, and there's megaphones around the outside, and they all point forward. It's this big, giant cone. But if you look at our air raid siren, it's cut up into pieces, yeah. and they come out the front. So yeah, that's, that's how mechanical sirens work. <laughs> sirens. Sirens are a fun time. So yeah, and you can get these if you, like, get on eBay. You can find them. Um, don't put them on your cars. You'll get in trouble. But you can get these on eBay to play with. They're really cheap. Uh, the mechanical ones are a lot more expensive than the electronic ones, but you can get them like this, uh, a little mechanical one like this, for like 50 bucks. Um, the, the really shiny, pretty ones, like for fire trucks, cost a fortune, but if you just want a cheap mechanical siren, they're really cheap. Um, the biggest siren ever made Here's your useless bit of knowledge. Is called the, uh, I, I, there's a guy that's got one out, it's called the Victory Siren, but the biggest siren ever made was an air raid siren, mm -hmm. and it's powered by a uh, Hemi engine. Like a big, like an engine, like a gasoline engine. I, it's probably diesel actually, but yeah. they, there is a siren that was made, uh, I can't remember who made it, but somebody will comment with it. We'll put a link into it. Uh, I'll put a link here in the video and you guys can check it out, but they're, they have made air raid sirens that mount on top of buildings and have gigantic Chrysler engines in them. Um, I remember they were made by Chrysler. So yeah, they're really cool. And that's everything you ever want to know about sirens. And you get this as your present for coming and playing today. Awesome. Yeah. All right, you guys have fun. I'm Chris. A horn. And she's weird. And we'll have more for you next time here at the Geek Group. Oh, you get to keep that. I don't get to throw it. I have to have something to throw at the camera. Thank you. We'll see you next time. We're going to get back to work.